Well, it looks like the clock is about to strike midnight on this Cinderella story, turning Lou Diamond into the proverbial pumpkin. Would you like to learn from those that are taking their lives, their businesses, and their passions to the next level? Best-selling author of Speak Easy and master connector Lou Diamond is here to connect you to some of the most inspiring and amazing people on this planet. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. I've been climbing, climbing up this hill. My heart is heavy and the air is still. Welcome, everyone, to another spectacular episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond. Oh, boy. Today on Thrive Loud, we have the founder and CEO of The Masucci Method, a ghostwriting agency that specializes in transforming podcasts and online courses into self-published books. As a continuing part of our cool series on cool things to do in podcasting, Thrive Lab listeners, I bring you Isabella Masucci. Isabella, how are you today? Thank you so much. That was lovely. Well, we try to make lovely introductions. We try to make people happy and we talk about cool things here on the show. Uh, but this is a very cool thing. And, and I want listeners to know that I just recently met Isabella. We had a conversation and I'm like, this is very cool. And I didn't know much about this. And I think our listeners would be fascinated as well. So I want to do a little rewind, Isabella. I don't want to go all the way to the womb. I want to understand mm -hmm. how this became the thing that you're focused on today. Yeah, of course. So I've always wanted to be a writer. I wrote my first book when I was 13. Um, and then I wasn't quite sure how to make money writing, I think, as all writers face at some point. And so I ended up working in events in Miami, had a great time, learned a lot about getting stuff done and completing projects and meeting deadlines and organizing things. And then the pandemic happened and I was let go because there were no events for years. And I honestly had a, an amazing time. I sat down, I wrote a novel that I've been dying to write for a really long time. And I had, I told a mentor that I'd finished my book. And she is a really incredible um, coach and she runs a, um, she has her own podcast. It's called The Nonprofit Lowdown and she teaches executives how to be great at fundraising. She's raised like tens of millions of dollars. She's super good at what she does. And she had this course that she was promoting and she was like, I kind of want a book about my course. And I was like, okay, yeah. She was like, do you want to do it? I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And then I was looking through all her stuff and I realized that she had this podcast that was this incredible library of resource and knowledge and expertise that just really wasn't streamlined in a way for users to really take hold of everything that was there. And I called her, I was like, listen, like, I think I want to transform your podcast into this book. She was like, do whatever you want. Like, I trust you. You'll do a great job. And so that's what I did. And it ended up amazing. It went number one on Amazon. And then I sold the concept a few more times. And that's what I do now. I love it. <laughs> it's pretty simple. <laughs> it's straightforward and, and really cool. And, and what's interesting is this, is that I know that people have been transforming a lot of the work into the audio space, which yeah. has actually been happening for a while. And a lot of times they've been rolling back, as you've said, maybe they've been documenting interviews or a series of content into really cool stories and, and really good, good books. But I think what's important is that everybody absorbs, absorbs content in a different way. Some people are audio listeners like myself. Mm -hmm. Some people um, love to read, which I like to read. I don't love to read as much, but I, I can do both. This is a cool concept because I think what people forget is that there's so much content with podcasts, online courses, all the stuff that you're, you're dealing together, and it can actually be repackaged in a way that connects to a completely different audience. Is that really what the intent was supposed to be about this? Yes. Yes and no. I, 
I wanted to repackage it. I'm a reader. I'm a writer. I prefer the written word, right? But I think that there's a lot in podcasting that's super amazing, but somehow kind of gets lost, right? Because if you're doing a lot of interview-based podcasts, sometimes like you lose the voice of the host and the host is really the expert in the subject. And so how do you weave together the host's expertise and knowledge and narrative in with all of the available resources on their podcast? And that's mm -hmm. really the question that I ask myself when I write these books is like, how do you make a podcast, a story about the host and their journey and their expertise and weave it in with all the amazing stuff that they're already doing in a, in a really powerful and narrative driven way. So, so I've got a good question here as it relates to how you go about getting if that makes sense yeah yeah how how do you go to make this story because because here here's a challenge right mm -hmm. um every podcast host has or, or every uh online course creator has a different means for what the purpose of the content is but this right. is a tremendous amount of audio content which requires you either to listen to it or have it transcribed yeah and now we need to get it from one form into another that's one thing that's hurdle number one and yeah. then when you have all of that content as any great editor would have to deal with now making it into a, a seamless flowing book that is something that can be a good resource. So I'd love for you to share with the listeners a little bit of the Masucci method to understand yeah. kind of how we get from the the voice, the, the spoken word, if you would, to the written word. Yeah, it's been a really interesting experience um, to to think about this. And I've had a lot of fun with it. And my work is very process driven. Again, it's a method, right? It's something that I apply to all of my clients. So the first step is we talk and we figure out the eight problems that you solve for your clients, mm. right? Like what are the main eight obstacles that you're trying to help your clients overcome? And so we do that in a series of about 10 interviews. Um, again, my process takes less than 40 hours of my client's time overall. Wow. So it's it's very focused on taking the least amount of time for them and a lot of time for me, but that's okay. <laughs> um, and so we get the top eight themes, right? And once we have those in place, that's the outline. Then we work backwards. We ask, like, what are the stories that you can tell me about this subject that apply to you? How did you overcome this theme? what happened to your life that this is your this this is your work that you've dedicated your life to like why did that happen and then i asked like what is the one provocative thought that you want your readers to leave this chapter with right so once i've gotten all that information then i ask okay what podcasts are relevant to this this topic got it right then they tell me okay this one is good and that one is good and this one's kind of good and then I listen to all of them about two or three times and I pull out the things that are most interesting and then I weave it in to a whole story. Let's talk about how you're pulling it out, uh, Isabella, because obviously, mm -hmm. look, some some people transcribe their podcast. There's actually written words to it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, is there is that part of your process? Is you know like literally decoding all that stuff? Is is there tools that you use technologically? I or? use I use Otter AI. I really like Otter AI. Okay, cool. It's a really good service. Um, a lot of it is, I think, and and I don't mean to sound braggy, but I think it's skill. Like mm -hmm. one of the things you're that allowed I to did, brag. You're the guest on the show here. You're the star <laughs> here. You're absolutely allowed to brag. <laughs> it's a lot of skill. Like yeah. in college, I interned for a few production companies in LA. Um, I interned for the company that produces The Walking Dead, right? Mm, yeah. And so one of the things that we were assigned as interns is we just got stacks of manuscripts and scripts like that were like, okay, they were like, read these. Are they good? Are they not good? Like, tell us, summarize it for us. So I had to write like a one page document of this like full feature length script summarize it, what are the most interesting points? 
and give it to the producers. Mm. Okay. And so, I don't know, I use that a lot to just analyze the podcast and be like, what is valuable here for the reader? What right. is entertaining? Like, what is worth knowing? Mm. So, so you're taking that skill and, and also what rec what resonates with you. And that's actually what I was getting at here. Yeah. It's hard for people to to get through their brains that the content that you're creating is actually like, you know, just this, it's coursework. Like you just said, it is a curriculum, whether it's podcast, we have 800 some odd episodes on, on this program. And Lord knows um, if I ever did something in the realm of what you did there, I, I had more of a methodology as to what I've learned from the lessons that I'm focused on and whether the content or not was relevant or not, mm -hmm. wasn't necessarily the challenge. But what I'm, I'm fascinated with is I think a lot of podcast hosts have no idea exactly what you know they're doing initially Initially, when they're getting it. They feel they have a concept and where it goes and it turns into something really cool and it builds. So their skill as an interviewer actually gets better on. And that was kind of where I was getting at. Is some of the early stuff that get, you know, like I would imagine if you heard the progression over time of what an interviewer has done and the amount of stuff that they're able to, and the questions they're able to ask to pull out that great content, do they lose some of the stuff as they're still figuring out podcasting? Is podcasting is still relatively new, and how that? How would you be able to adapt some of that, or maybe weight some of that as you're creating great content? I think like what I've what I've learned is that um, honestly, my service is is not for everyone, right? So there's a lot of there's a client filter that I've learned is very important to my work, and so. Like my work doesn't work for someone who just launched a podcast. Like you need to be at least a hundred episodes in to really have clarified your message and gotten to the point where you really understand what you're trying to give your audience, right? Um, and when I was working with um, another client of mine, like she was sort of new, she had just hit a hundred episodes and what she told me, which I loved, is that the, my process of working with her really helped her clarify her messaging yeah. and streamlined her podcast moving forward, mm. That's which I thought was line. great. Yeah. Talk about these online courses. Um, yeah. So um, some of like, I just onboarded a new client. She's amazing. She's like an Instagram star. She's a therapist um, and she sells online courses, right, to um, to her for people who fit her criteria. And I love it because it's like she's an entrepreneur. She's generating revenue in different ways. And so I literally take the course like I'm like, what do what do I need to learn here? <laughs> um, and so my job is I, I gather a lot of information for my work, right? Like I'm very good at processing a lot of information. And so I just, it's the same process. Like what is interesting here? What is worth hinting at? What is worth giving away? Um, and ultimately, like what, are, what is your goal for your business? Like do you want to generate more course sales or do you want to generate more brick and mortar, like one-on-one -on -one clients? I like it. I Isabella, you mentioned that you mm -hmm. love to read and love to write. I do. Yet, because of what you've been taking on, you've had to become a pretty active listener and video watcher of all this <laughs> yeah. content. So I guess my question is, are you enjoying and you you're becoming more familiar with this thing that is not your sweet spot for what you love to do? And if you have you grown to love it? You know, it's funny. Like, I think I people ask me this question because I listen to a lot of podcasts. A lot. And so I think I'm a little more judgy. Like I'm like, this is good and this is bad. Like not every podcast is good. It's just not. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, no, no, it's true. Um, and, well, and I and I, this is where I was get. That's where I was getting at. Where where you you're right yeah. that not only do you need a hundred episodes to get to, but there is a skill, and every show is different. Um, you know, some are just vanilla stuff. You feel like somebody's reading off a script. And yeah. you're just getting through somebody's bio as opposed to something unique or trying to pull out something about that particular guest or you start to understand what the host is about as you, as you right. build it. So it takes, a, it takes a while to do that. So I agree with you. Not every podcast show is, is great. 
this one is. But that's a whole other story. This one's fabulous. This one's amazing. (laughs) No, I actually really like it. I wouldn't be on it if I didn't like it. I've also learned to like really listen to the podcast before I onboard a client. This is important. Um, But I think like, I think the core of a good podcast is authenticity, right? Like, can you express yourself in a way that really motivates and resonates with people about whatever it is you're trying to address, right? Like I have this client right now that I'm trying to woo. I like really want her to sign with me. Um, And I just, I love what she does. Like, I just think that she's, uh, I don't want to like say who she is. I don't no, no, really no, it's okay. It. We'll, yeah. we'll keep we'll keep it at the 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 anonymous level. But but actually, but, this this led to my next question: is yeah, y- you know that not everybody's for you because they don't might not have the the content that lives up to what you can deliver. But yeah. there probably also is something that you know that you're going to be able to make them the best. So for those that are listening, and those other podcast, we have a lot of podcasters that listen to this program. Yeah. What what is the ideal um, desire for? Isabella Masucci for the Masucci method. What's a good fit? What do you what what would be a good fit for you? I found that I really like to work with people who help people. Right? That's that's a really good fit for me. Like if you are someone who's really trying to help people with their mind, help people with their health, help people with their finances, help people with their nutrition, right? And you're really trying to serve in a specific way. I think that means you have a lot to say. Yeah. So you're helping a lot of those people who are are one-on-one professionals or coaches or leaders or, you know, therapists or whatnot. I could totally see that being a good fit. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's a super good fit for like news, right? Like I'm like, I, yeah, it's tough. (laughs) Like it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a good fit, but yeah, I like, I help people who help people and I help them reach more people. Yeah. So if, if uh, in, in the, the business of the Masucci method, obviously, this is something that you've kicked off from, from an idea that this will continue to, to grow because this is a good fit. And this does make sense uh, for a lot of people trying to expand their library, pun intended, of yeah. content that they could offer. How has it been for you? As an entrepreneur, having to wear that hat and not only obviously do the work that you're doing, which is very hands on, but there's the marketing of the work, there's the promotion of it, there's getting the word out outside of what you do so that it makes sense or managing your own time and other time of everything you have to deal with. How has that been for you, Isabel? You know, it's been difficult and it's been fun. Um, I, uh, you know, in full transparency, I, I got hit by a drunk driver in January of this year and I was really hurt and I was really injured and I had also just really fully decided to launch this business um so there was no going back right so I was it was a really like amazing experience to just sit into myself and understand that I can heal and I can grow a business and I can make money and I can write and I can be an entrepreneur all at the same time, right? Um, I don't know if that sounds, if that's what you were expecting, but it was, you know, I really learned to not just hire employees, but hire people to help me, yeah. right? So I have a coach, I have a therapist, right? Like I really surrounded myself with a lot of strength and a lot of people who really helped me clear my mindset and help me understand how to how to do my work as best as possible. Um, and I finished this year, I finished three books. You know, I have three happy clients. I'm like almost fully healed. Um, I, was about, I was about to ask, are, are you yeah. okay? Everything good? Was, I'm all right. Yeah, okay. like I'm all right. Like I really did it. Like I, <laughs> I, I saw you in person. You were looking pretty good. I had no idea that there was any. No, I didn't yeah. tell you because I don't know. I don't know. I, but yeah, I got hit by, it was pretty bad. It yeah. was like really scary. Um, but well, for, is, it was, that, is, was anyone else hurt in the, in the incident or is everything yeah. okay? Jeez. No, it was, it was not. It was a really scary experience. Mm. Um, and it just, it happened at a moment where, like it was either like I give up my whole business, right? Or I don't. Mm-hmm. And that was it. 
like it was one decision um and i i like went all in on myself i was like this is it like <laughs> um it, in all honesty and i really learned to like balance time for myself right so i do all my healing i go to pilates every day i like take really good care of myself i also take really good care of my clients you're, you're front running, as you know, because you're a listener of the show and you've become an amazing <laughs> podcast listener. One of the questions I love to ask you, look, when we all have those days, when we're not quite kicking on, on all cylinders and we have trouble thriving. I was going to ask what practice you seek on getting yourself back on the thriving track, but maybe I'll even ask this yeah. question. What person do you seek out to help you get there if you need it? My coach is really amazing. Her name is Carrie. She um, it's called rank and file business coaching. If anyone wants to check her out, she's been amazing. Um, I found this amazing chiropractor. He's 87. He's retired. He's <laughs> <Wow>. like, <laughs> he like put me back together, Humpty Dumpty style. Yep. And I do a lot of Pilates. Okay. I like, it. I really like Pilates. <laughs> like, I keep seeing those machines and I have no idea what's going on. I used to think Pilates really was a food. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're really, I did a book for a sex therapist. Okay. Um, and she is super amazing. Um, and her book was all about how do you have a he healthy sexual appetite if you've been in an overly religious community that that really stigmatizes sexuality, right? Like, That's how do you one. move on from that? Yeah. That was what I spent my whole year writing about. I know all about it. And... <laughs> And she told me, like, if you have a lot of trauma, like Pilates is one of the best things for you because it's one of the most regulating exercises. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not like pitching Pilates, but if anybody needs You're, you're pitching everything here. We got it all going on. I love it. We haven't even gotten to the but, plug section yet. I'm very happy with this. No, so like that's been really helpful. I journal a lot. I also have continued to write my own books. Yeah, I was, I was going to go there. What, what, yeah, what? which has been, yeah. Well, I was going to say, what what type of writing do you do? What is your style that you like to write? Is, is it nonfiction? Is it fiction? Yeah. I mean, I'm currently um, in the last stages of this romance that I'm writing. Okay. It's called Orgasms and Sunsets Make You Ill. It's like a very... <laughs> Hold on one second. Let me think about that for a minute. <laughs> Can I disagree with the title? Anyway. No. <laughs> Um, I think yeah, we just a, named this episode. Okay. <laughs> go for it. It's, it's a satire on modern romance. It's very Got kitschy. It. Got it. I'm very cute. Well, I look forward um, to, to reading all of it. And, and obviously, you know, how do you find the time to write it with all these other works that you're doing? I, I, write, on, I write my novels on Sunday. On Sundays. Okay. Yeah. Isabella, let's do the plug section and then we're going to go down Fun Street here. Okay. <laughs> Share with the listeners all the places people can find you, social handles, websites, URLs. We'll put it on the show notes, but it always gets more engagement when they hear it from you. Sure. So my website is www.themasuchimethod.com. You can find me on LinkedIn. Um, uh, my name is Isabella Masucci. Message me. I'll message you back. And you can also send me an email at Isabella at themasuchimethod.com. And I'd love to hear from you. Love it. And for the listeners? Not the people looking at the screens and not when you're driving. That's M-A-S-U-C-C-I for Masucci. There you go. And Isabella. Very Thank cool. Thank you. Isabella, you were born to be fun, but I want to know if you're ready to go down Fun Street here on Thrive Loud. Go. <laughs> okay. As we have uh, distractions here on the side, can you share with me what you shared? Can you share with the listeners what you shared with me mm -hmm. is one of your all-time favorite movies? Yeah, I'm really, a, I've always loved The Cinderella Man. Okay. Why does that movie connect so much with you? I mean, I I don't I think it's just about like when you're down and out, like how do you get up again? Which, if you can't tell, has been a really big theme of my year. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty three is going to be an interesting year for you to pick a word for you, for you to pick what word you're going to focus on for the year. No, but I've always loved that movie because it's just about like when you are down and out and you can't do anything and you, the whole world seems to be stacked against you. Like, how do you rise? Oh, I like that. It's, it's, you're, you're, a, you're a thriver by nature. You're thriving loud just in thinking about how you're going to approach it. Yeah. Uh, just, j just for, for the listeners out here, uh, I actually saw them make this movie. Just a random, total small world story. Really? Yeah, it, was, it, was in, it was in California for a certain piece and they were doing some stuff. We had no idea 
and it was pretty cool. And uh, let's just say I almost crashed into the star of the movie by like doing that thing when you're walking <laughs> and you walk the wrong way. That's a, that's, that's a story for another podcast, but anyway. All right, Isabella, I'm going to do a little speed round here for Fun Street. We're going to have some fun. I want the first thing that comes to your mind. These are things that lift you up, motivate you, make you feel good. They basically make you thrive. Yeah. Of late, a song that you love to listen to or maybe one that pumps you up. Um, there's this song called Future Me. I really love corny, cheesy music. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not a music person. What is corny? Che che what, what is I, that? I just love like really good messaging music. Like okay. what what is going to like make me happy in the morning? You should love actually, country music then. That would really I hit you right off. I, I'm a huge fan. Loves country music and I, nobody will ever let me live it down. And I don't care. Um, and then there was this artist I found on on Spotify. His name is Rob Ricardo. He did, he did this song called When Will I Learn? That's like, when will I learn that like I'm enough? And I honestly sent him money. I was like, this was a great song. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I sent him like, it's like just lunch money, like 30 bucks on <laughs> Spotify. I was like, thanks for this. <laughs> uh, favorite food that's not a dessert? Um, I love a good steak. Okay. Favorite dessert? Mm, I really love, um, I guess it's not dessert, but I love pastries. I used to live in France. And Wait, I just pastries is dessert? <laughs> I guess it's like a breakfast dessert, but I love pastries. No, pastries basically. is definitely a dessert. I mean, you could have it for <laughs> breakfast, but it's a dessert. It's literally like lots of sugar and cream and stuff like that yeah, or whatever. Yeah, it's a dessert. Pastries yeah. works. I like that. An activity you wish you did more of? Um, I was a really big salsa dancer for a yeah. really long time, and I had to stop because of my accident, and I'm ready to start doing it again. All right. An activity you wish you did less of? Mm, honestly, like I've been doing a lot of time auditing the last couple months, and I'm pretty good. Okay, good. You, you got through it. You figured out what I'm going to do right. <laughs> <laughs> if I could if I could snap my fingers and Isabella Masucci can be anywhere in the world, where is she? I'd be having a glass of wine with my best friend in Paris. Oh, I like that. From all of the podcasts that you've been listening to that aren't named Thrive Loud, uh, mm -hmm. that you've been listening to that aren't ones that you've had to do for your job, mm -hmm. outside of that, what are like your top podcasts that you're listening to that are piquing your interest in educating you? I'm really into Stacey Bayman's podcast. She's a, a sales coach. I really like her a lot. My business coach is in her mastermind. Awesome. Uh, um, so I, I just, and she's helped me sell. Like I've, I've hit six figures in my business and a lot of it has to do with what she taught. Awesome. The Masucci Method, everybody's got to check it out. This is Isabella Masucci, who is a rock star, and I can't wait to see more. I'm so glad you're feeling better and, and recuperating. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't tell you. but I No, no. You, you told us here, which means you told everybody. <laughs> and I'm really yeah. glad that you're recovering and on a way because you're already thriving. And I can't even imagine what that would mean when, you, you know, with, with no limitations, what that means for Isabella. I'm really excited for next year. You know, I, I hit all my goals this year. And I wrote three books. Yeah, uh, it's next year, like, I'm ready. Isabella Masucci, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you. And to all our listeners out there, thank you for joining us. And until next time, keep moving on, and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. Hey, hey, future me. I hope the things that hold me down will one day set you free. That choke me up Who want to let you breathe And hey, hey, future me I hope the things that hold me down Will one day set you free You've been listening to Thrive Loud With your host, Lou Diamond Check us out on the web at thriveloud.com And follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook At Thrive Loud and check us out on the Good Pods app at Thrive Loud, where you can follow, listen, and connect directly to Lou and all of the Thrive Loud episodes. Thanks for listening.